private portion of a lady's anatomy. Then calling me said organ in incestual congress with its maternal ancestor. He then moved towards the kitchen, violently plucked the small metallic double decker from Angela's eye and placed it back on the Monopoly square from where it had begun its abusive journey. Right, said Simon sternly. I'm buying Hammersmith Apollo, despite what this gormless Burke may think about it. And then he cemented my poor opinion of his understanding of rudimentary biology by referring to me as a female sexual organ who regularly engaged in fellatio. I was about to point out the anomaly inherent in this anatomical suggestion when I was distracted by the little silver dog which, along with the top-hatted capitalist, had been carried over from classic Monopoly. The tiny metallic dog had begun to bark at me and what I couldn't help but notice was the voice of my dead mother. She said a real man would have put up his dukes by now, whatever that may mean. Or at least married the fat tan tart with a nipple ring showing through a canary yellow jumpsuit across the coffee table before me. I loudly protested to my Monopoly dog mother that I was certain she had shuffled off this mortal mosquito coil months ago, having measured the snail bait myself under the tea cozy. And that even if she wasn't dead, there was no reason to speak about my ever tormenting mon cherie Janice in such a disrespectful manner. He's got ideas beyond his station, said the silver monopoly millionaire from under his top hat and in the voice of Deputy Principal Vaughan from Homebush Boys High School, whom I recognised even without his ubiquitous short sleeve safari suit. Screw you Vaughan, hasta the alum. I'll eat a sticky bun in class whenever I want to. I said, perhaps rather too brusquely as I brashly overturned the brass-legged coffee table. It may seem extreme, but I'd been holding that sentence in my mouth for 20 years, for the 20 years that had passed since Mr. Vaughan had caned me with Vijay Akuma Charawanamutu, the Sri Lankan exchange student. Better late than never, said the London bus, and then continued, the grass is always greener on the other platitude and will look better in the morn. So turn the other cliche and remember it's always darkest before the time that it's not quite as dark as it was before, dickhead. Black. I then stood up, removed all clothing from my person, and dived chest first upon what remained of the Monopoly game, crushing all comment from the bus and its compatriots, as well as Simon's foot. As Simon swore at his big toe, hugging it wetly, Janice asked me calmly, though rather harshly, I thought, to please leave. A little perplexed, I did so, putting my pants back on my fist so they wouldn't think I was weird. But of course, none of this answers your question, officer, which is no. I have no idea how the fire began. Perhaps the chemist can help you. Despite his poor skills as an apothecary, I'm told he's a fine shot with a crossbow. At least that's what the duck in the codeine aisle said as I waited for my prescription the next morning after waking covered in soot in the burned out wreckage of the neighbor's greenhouse. The comforting scent of dynamic lifter making the day glow brightly before me. And Janice's nipple ring swinging swiftly in my freshly pierced ear. Your sincerely, Reverend Doctor Achilles Tendonitis, retired. Yasuo.